And we welcome you inside the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds. Xanax Drew Blevins alongside Jimmy Milliken as the Carolina Thunderbirds close out their four-game homestand tonight, taking on the Danville Dashers. Jimmy, it's a battle of the best in the West. Krivil, Jan Krivilovic for Carolina. And, of course, uh, you got to go with 19, Fred Hine for um, Danville. I'm going to put a different spin on this game. I think you're going to have to watch the rookie Seth Enzer and see what he's going to bring to the table. And on the Carolina side of things, I'm looking at Jay Kenny, who's going to have the response. It seemed like those two had a little bit of unfinished business toward the tail end of yesterday's game. It'll be Jesse Gordachuk in net for Danville, Patrick Polivka in net for Carolina. Brian Skelly will drop the puck as he'll be our head official this evening. And away we go. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one from Winston-Salem. Carolina is able to get to the puck as Connor Haas spanks it around Johan Hoagland. It goes down into the corner where Enzers run in too hard but gets the puck out to the far side wing. Moved ahead for Tessereros. He wrists one off the body of Klinetsky. It bounces around at center but only for a moment. Danville trying to push it back into the zone. Klinetsky works wide to Kenny. Coming through the middle to Connor Haas. He'll retreat back at his blue line and Haas will try to step forward with it. Had a goal and an assist yesterday. Haas will dump it in as Klinetsky gets off for the first line change of the game. Enzer with a head man look through center. Too far for everybody. Mishandled by Kenny. Into the corner it goes. Nair after it. He's knocked hard by Kenny as the puck stays out there the far side wing. Spun toward the net as Polivka steers it out. And on the fresh ice it comes all the way back out to center where Atwell's got to come through the middle. He finds Fred Hine. The bearded wonder on the backhand tries to feed it down the dasher. Vlasov goes D to D, and Carolina begins the breakout through the middle. Daniel Martin shoots it out wide. It bounces to Panachik, who takes it across the blue line. Backhands it into the zone. Pressure there by Palmerville. Knocks Osaka away from the puck as it'll be taken and moved along by Gulo. Spanked up off the near side half wall to Tanner Hildebrandt, who backhands it into the zone. A rolling puck that Patrick Polivka comes out to play, and he backhands it along for his defense. Out wide for Osaka. Cross ice pass to Jan Salak as he crosses through neutral ice. Goes out to the far side wing and dumps it into the zone. Chased into the corner by Panachik. Hoagland beats him to it. He's taken down by Salak as the Thunderbirds grab possession in the attacking zone corner. To the top and Campbell. He feeds it across for Holt. Long wrist shot off the side of the goal. George Holt, the former Watertown Wolf, one goal so far this season. Really got into the physical side of the game yesterday, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, he, he had a really good game yesterday, but that first shot, you know, uh, uh, Gordon Chuck looked like he was on, and uh, he looks like he's in the game. Two minutes gone by here in the first period. Still scoreless between Danville and Carolina through the middle of the ice. Danville after the puck as they continue to battle. This is Luciani who takes the puck and moves it quickly ahead, crossing the blue line with it, but only for a moment was Efimov Barakov, and Carolina's got it once again coming through center. Nigel Slade dumps it in down the near side half wall as it rolls around back behind of Gordachuk. Danville's able to get it back out to center. Klinetsky overskates the puck, so this will come all the way back down to Polivka, who sets it on a tee for Klinetsky. Chin was still out neutral ice. He's got it, moves to Krivalovic, who touches along for Connor Haas. Here he comes, right down the near side wing. Slapper sails high over top of Gordachuk. Catches a glass stanchion and takes the Danville bounce. They control and go back to center. Fate has it at his defensive blue line. He's upended as Danville has possession of the puck. Fate using that big body to come back and get it and feeds Joe Cangelosi ahead. The New Jersey native, Cangelosi, with one move. He's got support from behind, which is Connor Haas, steered toward the front where he was looking for Martin. Pass was disrupted by Seth Enzer, and here comes the aforementioned Enzer. Crossing the blue line, Dipsy Doodles around his man, walks in a Richter blocker save by Polivka. Seth Enzer got through everybody, and Polivka was equal to the task. Fed up to the point, nobody there for Danville. Hoagland bows a tire, but is able to regroup and comes back through center to Nair in the middle. That was almost a breakaway from Peter Panachik if uh, Hoagland had fell down and lost a puck. Polivka will set it on the C for Stan Vlasov as he feeds it all the way ahead. Could be a chance for Carolina. Osaka's in all alone from the wing. Tries it to squirt it in from the forehand side, and it rolls off the toe of his stick. Carolina has it back out at center. Osaka. Controlling and feeds Vlas off. It runs too far for him off the end wall. Danville will have possession. To the far side, Gulo comes through the middle looking for Hildebrand. It was blocked off, and Carolina's got it. They'll stay on side. Near side, Weed Panachik, Rister. Sticked aside by Jesse Gordachuk. 
Quickly having to get back into the swing of things as he's been tested early. Panacek from the near side corner. Goes up to the top. Holt falls as he sends a shot in toward Gordichuk. He'll swallow it without giving a rebound and will get the first whistle of the game with 15.37 to go in the first. Nice deflection by Joe Osaka on to Gordichuk. Uh, good good, good wear awareness from Bakora on the back end to see Osaka there for that tip. Well, and the other thing there was Joe Osaka is really starting to come into his own. Played in the SPHL last year, showing speed and offensive skill. Yeah, he's just getting used to uh, the skill and speed of the Federal League here. And uh, I think in, in no time he's going to be on one of, one of the best players the uh, Thunderbirds has. Armstrong with a cross eyes pass all the way out for Artem Efimov. Barakov, he's it, knocked and Carolina's got it. Jan Krivalovic. Comes up the near side wing, stops at the hash marks and starts his engine again to go back down into the corner. Slade sweeps it up on the backhand. He was looking to move it up to Campbell. Instead, it'll be intercepted. Here comes Levi Armstrong. Gets around Campbell with a dump in and heads behind the net. Steers one toward the front. It's up in the air. A bouncing puck taken by Carolina. They could have numbers if they hurry. Thompson moves it ahead for Krivalovic as he goes to work with Palmerville. Palmerville wins it. Goes for Efimov Barakov as this one hops up into the meshing and out of play. 14.54 to go in this opening frame. Four to one shots on goal right now for Carolina. One shot on goal for Danville. Those four shots have been good shots for Carolina on the door to Chuck. Dr. Smash Mouth, Dr. Sherry, uh, Sarah Schof starting to get into it here. She, of course, is the lead orthodontist for Salem Smiles who gave out the kids' jerseys tonight. They look splendid, don't they, They Jimmy? look great on these little kids walking around with that jersey on. That, that, one of the nicest ladies you ever meet. And does a great job handling all the teeth of the players and the good people of Winston-Salem. Through the middle, Haas works out wide. Chance in front, oh. tipped on goal. Gordon Chuck says no. And the rebound squirts out to Danville. Danny Martin was looking to add to his goal total. Through the middle, it's Nair. He's upended, but it's going to get the puck right back as it's fed down low by Troy Murray. On the near side wing, turning with it is Hoagland. He loses it. Danny Martin off of his skate. Two on two with Connor Haas now. He comes down the left wing side. Stops in the corner and turns back up to the point. Feeds it in front for Daniel Martin. Collects it on his forehand and goes into that left wing corner once more. Right down the kick plate. Taken for a moment by Danville. That's a huge hit that Connor Haas lays as he's starting to get into the physical side of things as well. Joe Osaka going to work. Danville had a couple of dashers in that corner, and they'll be able to get it out to center no further as Klinetsky has it for Carolina. To Osaka, feeds it off the end wall. Hoagland going after it. He's been pressured a couple times here, and he'll be ridden into the corner boards by Carolina. Osaka tried to knock the puck free. He'll go battle with Peter Panacek, and Jan Salak comes in to knock it free. Salak. Feeds the point Vlas off. Long wrist shot collected in the glove of Jesse Gordichuk, and he will not give a rebound once more. Both teams are playing extremely hard right now. Both teams are looking actually really good. Well, it's been nice to see that Danville hasn't had to rely on Fred Hine, who I'm pretty sure has only touched the puck two, maybe three times, mm -hmm. but they're starting to get contributions from outside of big number 19, who is on the ice now taking the draw against Carolina. He won it back, but Osaka jumped the puck and has possession. He curls into the high slot. Arister blocked on the way through. Salak with a chance. Denied good defensive stick by age. Uh, excuse me, that was Seth Enzer. Carolina has it on the far side wing. Two by two, they battle up near the blue line. Palmerville had it for a moment, but instead it goes down to Osaka. Palmerville runs hard into him, looking for Tanner Hildebrandt. Here's a shot from the point by Fate. Might have been tipped on the way through as it goes harmlessly into the corner, and here comes Danville. Fred Hine into the corner as he's ahead of Fate. Sends one off the side of the goal. It's caught on the back skirt, and the officials will blow it dead as it gets trapped up on the back side of the net. 12.59 to go in the first period. Yeah, Stan Vlasov got a good uh, board check against uh, number 94, Gulo, over here in the corner just now, and uh, set, set that up. See, Nick Gulo has been... Uh, an interesting story, he has one point so far, but he's one of the smaller guys you'll see in the FPHL, and he was one of the guys who wanted to have a run at Jay Kenny. Yeah, he, he did what he had to do last night. I don't think he wanted to, but I think he felt he had to do that. Krivalovic comes across the blue line on his forehand, looking to feed Slade for the one-timer, which he fanned on. Danville will gladly send this all the way down, and that's going to be icing. 12-34 to go in this period. 7-1 shots on goal for Carolina right now. Still one for Danville. 
So the faceoff will be down to the glove hand side of Jesse Gordichuk. Or excuse me now, they are going to switch it over to the blocker side. I was about to say, I don't know why it'd be over there. <laughs> Krivalovic has the puck off the draw to the top. Holt slap shot through traffic, blocked by the last man who was Hine. He goes up for Hildebrandt and works out wide for Gulo. Stepping ahead of the blue line, offside was Tanner Hildebrandt. That was all due to uh, George Holt stepping up at the blue line, laying a check on to, uh, to uh, number nine, 94. We'll have a seat here. Wake Forest Baptist Health provides the official team doctors to the Carolina Thunderbirds. To learn more about the quality medical care offered at Wake Baptist Health, visit wakehealth.edu. Kenny for tripping with 11.21 to go in the first period. Defenseman from Boston, Massachusetts, split his college tie between Elmira College and SUNY Cortland. See, that's been one of the new pieces of emphasis here. When you miss a body check, you can't go below the knees to get somebody. That's the old clipping call. I think that's what they get Kenny for there. Yeah, and I believe Kenny didn't really try to trip him. I think it just after the check, I think his, his skate just got tangled up with, uh, with uh, Zelak skate as well. So Just an unfortunate series of events for Carolina, but they'll start the kill off quite well by sending it all the way down. Carolina has only allowed one power play goal against and now 28 tries. Hine with a quick snap wrister, kicked out with a purpose by Polivka. Palmerville holds the line but sends it right to Panachik who comes up the left wing, dumps it all the way out. Yeah, Carolina's ranked number one in the league right now at 96.2%. We'll see if they can keep that going. Danville power play came into the weekend operating at 31.2%. Solid, but so far, not a whole lot going for him here. They're missing their number one guy on the power play, Justin Brosen. Hildebrandt knocked from his feet as it's finished by Carolina once again. And yeah, missing Justin Brosen is one of those critical misses for Danville. They'll break it out here with 50 seconds to go on the power play. Dumped in by Hoagland. Polivka out of his net, stops it up against the Cricket Wireless Dasher. Goes over for Campbell, who gets a lucky bounce off the kick plate and back out to center. Atwell being pressured on the far side. Two by two, they battle over by the near side half wall. This is taken by Carolina and dumped all the way down once again. Methodical penalty kill so far for Carolina. Not a whole lot of opportunity for Danville. Late ahead into the zone as Jesse Nair will go after the puck. He's got it on his backhand and will begin to set things up. Feeds it down low. In front, quick wrister. Good stop by Polivka. And it gets caught up in his paraphernalia. 16 he'll seconds, melt it down. 16 seconds left on the penalty kill or the power play for Danville. 9.37 to go in the period. And, Jimmy, you just received a message, an official word, that the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex has officially opened standing room only. The sellout, another sellout tonight. Face-off is won by Carolina as they go into the corner. Danville takes it there. Palmerville has his shot blocked immediately by Connor Haas as he's slow to get up. Carolina's got a two-on-one the other way. Cangelosi save, made rebound, scores! Daniel Kudetsky puts in the rebound, and Carolina scores a shorty. Shorty, shorthand goal by number seven, Daniel Kudetsky, and here comes the Sox. It is sock toss night here in Carolina, and all of these will be given <laughs> as charitable contributions. Even Jay Kenny got hit the head with, with another sock. <laughs> what a tremendous sight here as the charitable people of Winston-Salem fire socks onto the ice. Daniel Klonetsky scores the goal. It's his third of the season, his ninth point, and Carolina's third shorthanded goal of the season. This is... I this have, is beautiful. This is great. I have to say uh, a big thank you to Caitlin Lusk in the, in the uh, front office for putting this together. This is a great thing they do here in Carolina, and uh, I wish more teams would get into this because this is a, a big thing out there for p homeless people and everything like that who can't afford socks to help them out out there when it's cold outside. This is a tremendous step forward as the Carolina Thunderbirds will be helping out the community. And I think the best part of this is there are some people who can only give one pack of socks. There are some people who can only give one pair of socks. But I believe everybody's given something. Exactly, and yeah. that's the important thing here. It really is the place of the heart when it comes to gift giving that is special and such a cool sight to see the Thunderbirds players and office staff on the ice 
to collect these socks. Yep. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Also have to give a shout out to team chaplain Kerry Skipworth, who also helped out and I believe was one of the men who pushed this idea along with Caitlin yes. Lusk. Yes, he was. And just a tremendous showing of generosity as we near the season of giving and Christmas time. Yep. And George Holt just looked at the fans and clapped his hands to everybody. Classy organizational move here with 9.25 to go in period number one. And we would be We'll step aside after these messages. Guess I should say we'll step aside for these messages. Five seconds to go in period number one, one nothing Carolina. Daniel Klinetsky has the goal that is the difference right now. It's a big goal for Carolina, third short-handed goal of the season. First shorty since last weekend when Daniel Martin did it exactly one week ago today. Yeah, this uh, these guys understand the whole aspect of uh, the penalty kill, and uh, they, they're not scared to jump into the play, as you've seen right there with Daniel Klinetsky, a defenseman. Danville has possession to the puck as they come out through center, falling down on the play was Tessarero as he got smacked by Bacor. Out wide, Joe Osaka carries it across the defensive blue line, trips up on the puck, but's able to finish it into the zone as Carolina goes on the attack. Enzer battling here as Zelak comes in to help knock the puck free. Two Thunderbirds and two Dashers in the near side corner trying to jostle the puck out. Nobody really coming away with it yet. Hoagland finally comes free, but turns it over immediately. At the point, Bacor sends it toward the net, Ooh. tipped on goal. Good stop by Gordichuk. In the corner, they continue to go after it. Zelak kicking away at it. He'll have Hoagland to help him out. Up to the point, Bacor walks the blue line. Sends a wrister, tipped on the way through. Carolina's got it. Salak sends one off of the near side pad of Gordichuk and picked up by Danville's Hoagland. He sends it back up to the top. Bacor feeds it down the near side boards. Right back up that same side, it hits a glass stanchion and ricochets out to center where Dominic Fate will hold possession for Carolina. Snaps a pass to Panachik as he feeds Everett Thompson crossing the line. Driving in on his backhand, button hooks toward the front. panachik has got the puck, spins one, looking for a shooting lane. Can't get one off of Gordachuk as the puck skitters into the near side corner again. Picked up by Krivalovic. He holds possession. Fans wanted a call as Panachik had his stick kicked. cross ice pass to nobody in particular. Carolina after the puck again. Danville's able to lift it up and out of the zone. Chasing after it here, Zephimov Barakov as he loses his stick, going after George Holt. Far side, spun back toward the net by Danville. Up in the air, whacked at. Polivka guarding the near side post. May have got a piece of it as it's worked into the middle. One-timer, great stop by Polivka. Kicks it out, and Carolina has possession. Nigel Slade through center, able to move it ahead now for Everett Thompson. Left side wing boards, feeds the top one-timer. Gordachuk says no with a leg pad. Up to the top, Klonetsky, who has the goal, knocked to, to the ice as Slade goes after the puck. On his forehand, feeds it low. Now up to the point for Nathan Campbell. He fumbles it back out to center, and Carolina has to regroup. Campbell to Klonetsky. He'll spin it up the boards for Connor Haas, who works wide for Nathan Campbell now. 
Former Danville Dasher also spent three games with Elmira last season. Two on two, crossing the line. Fed ahead to Connor Haas as he was looking for a pass from Cangelos. He was blocked on the way through, and here comes Danville. Two on it's one. a two on one if they hurry. Atwell doesn't see his man. He was looking for Fred Hine, but it goes off the skate of Daniel Klinetsky. In front, chance here. Polivka mm. says no and swallows the rebound. And now Gulo is going to get in on it, and it's one big group hug right in front of Patrick Polivka. I see Gulo and Kenny f- face to, well, chest to face, I maybe. Face to pectoral muscles. <laughs> exactly. And that's uh, not a short joke. Now, just don't get, get don't get me wrong, but yeah, I, you can see them laughing at each other right there because of now, the last take, night. Now, take a look at this. Jay Kenny is perched up on the goal stick of Patrick Polivka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, that was a good. Polivka looked good right there because he had uh, nine in the slot and took a great shot right there. And then Hine come back over in the corner, had another great shot on him. So. Well, and something that we really didn't get to see last night from Polivka was oh, his great reflexes. Save. Great stop in front on Fred Hine, and he covers it. And Hine and Klinetsky are going to have a few words. But we never saw his reflexes tested. And here, quickly, two snap wristers from Fred Hine, and he's been equal to the challenge. Polifka is look like he's, every shot he's taken, he's getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, and you can't do much better than one one goal against last night. So, 5.49 to go in the first period, one nothing Carolina. Daniel Klinetsky has the difference-making goal, and he's on the ice right now. Trading places with Daniel Martin as everybody works out their choreography. Face-off is won back by Danville, perhaps a little bit too well as it's all the way back out to center. Danville floats it through the zone. Hine kicks it out wide for Atwell, Boy. who dumps it in, and he gets into it with Connor Haas. They'll have a couple of words, and Haas is going to go with Atwell. Haas lands a right and a right. Atwell can't get his arm free. Haas goes down to the ice, and they're going to battle it out here. Haas swings around at Atwell again, throws him to the ice. This is a good little there match, go. and Haas good. gets him down on the ice. That was a great tilt right there for both teams. Both teams banging their sticks against the boards. That's what we thought was going to happen tonight. Connor Haas is a little bit taller and a little bit leaner than Aaron Atwell, but those two go punch for punch, and that was a solid swing in the ring, Jimmy Milliken. I think that was what we needed right now. The crowd, the the electricity in the building is fluid right now. Both teams is up. I think both teams are fixing to skate hard as they skated all night. Come the next five minutes. And here's the beautiful thing about a league that really embraces the old-time hockey. They're just going to sit for five minutes. There's nothing wrong with that. That was a good, clean hit and a good response by Atwell, who wanted to have a go with Connor Haas. They have the words. They oblige, and they both land a couple of good shots there. Exactly what both of these teams might have needed right there. So with five and a half minutes to go in the period, we'll skate five aside with Connor Haas and Aaron Atwell heading off to the penalty box. Five minutes apiece for fighting. Danville swings it toward the net. Tessarero got a stick to it. Coming in, Murray is able to hold the blue line and go low for Tessarero. Vlasov rides him into the end boards. He'll get a little bit of help from behind as Jesse Nair comes around to take the puck. Thompson. Hanging on to it, loses possession to Nair, who feeds it low for Tessarero. On his backhand, he was looking for Zelak. Carolina sends it off of a glass stanchion and nearly skittered back into the front. Vlasov, cross-ice pass, looking for Osaka. He'll dump it into the zone as Peter Panacic goes after it. Gordachuk backhands this one along for Palmerville, who sends it up and ahead. Across the blue line, Nathan Campbell is going to retreat into the zone, turns in the corner, and starts the breakout through the middle. Osaka hanging on to it, finds Dominic Fate. Large looming presence. Fate goes to Osaka. He nearly got caught up with Nathan Campbell. Is having trouble entering the zone was Levi Armstrong. Jan Salak takes it back, crossing the blue line. Rister over the crossbar, bounces a couple of times. Fate tried to hold the line. He can't do it, but the linesman helps him out. It goes off of his skate, and the puck stays at center. Salak getting tangled up here as Efimov Barakov gets it for Danville and dumps it in with four minutes to go in the period. Behind the net, Campbell finds Everett Thompson on the far side of the ice. He Three crosses to Grivalovic. Three on two as they cross the blue line. A pass to Klinetsky. Quick Richard. Good stop by Gordachuk. The rebound goes into the far side corner. Nick Gulo onto the puck here. Skates ahead of the red line. Dumps it in for Danville. Patrick Polivka has it in his glove. Thought about playing it out and will think better of it as Nigel Slade and Nick Gulo are going to have some words. 
One thing I like about Gulo is he's not scared to get in people's face and he's not scared to go to the net. Gulo's what, all of five, six, five, seven? He, 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 he plays six foot one, looks like to me. So I love a player like that. He's certainly been a grinder in this series so far. And I know that you have a soft spot for those grinder guys. That's right. I, I love a good, tough, old school hockey type of guy. Krivalovic has it at the red line, dumps it in down the left side wing. It rolls behind the net, and Gordchuk's going to do it himself. Sends it out to the far side. Gulo, headman look for Zilak. Klonetsky gets him shoulder to shoulder. Polivka has the puck as it rolled back to him. Krivalovic behind the net for Jay Kenny. Hine takes a look at Kenny as he finds John Krivalovic up the left side wing. A look for Nigel Slade. Crossing the blue line, dumps it on his backhand and gets off on a change. Everett Thompson. Avoids a hit from Hoagland, who takes the puck from him, and finds Enzer. He feeds this one all the way down. A 2-3 hopper that goes behind the goal line, and icing called against Danville with 3.05 to go in the period. Right now, Carolina's got 15 shots on goal, and Danville has eight. So Danville has, uh, ever since that goal, has been fighting back to put some shots on Patrick Polifka. It's certainly been a little bit more valiant effort here in the first by Danville as they were just shut down time and time again in yesterday's opening 20. And Ray Tremblay is going to be happy about that. Carolina leading where it counts, one to nothing, with now three minutes to go in this first period. Hoagland turns back up to the right wing boards, backhands it along. It'll roll back down the kick plate for, da uh, for Stan Vlasov, pardon. Finds Daniel Martin near side. Sticks collide as the puck hops up in the air. Carolina's got it. Crossing the line, Bacor rolls it off of his forehand. Now Enzer takes over for Danville. Pressured from behind by Cangelosi. Enzer is going to dump it all the way down once again. Battle for the puck. This time Danville's going to win it. Hard into the boards goes Jesse Nair. He holds on to it. Stick handling and looking for somebody to pass to. Bacor onto the puck there, but Nair is able to feed it right back behind the net once more. Comes up the near side boards. Panachik. Looking ahead, he's got Cangelos. He gains the red line and dumps it in. Gordachuk stops it on the backhand and works it up for Troy Murray. Gains the red line and dumps it in. Gulo's going to go after the puck here. Tied up with Dominic Fate, smallest guy on the ice and one of the bigger ones. Osaka feeds it ahead for Panachik. He's got Salak going with it. Panachik stops, toe drags, looks in front. One time blocked on the way through. Good defensive stick there. Salak never got good wood on that one-timer. That was Seth Enzer. Nathan Campbell now loses to Nick Gulo. Backhands it in front. Nobody home. Panachik will be sprung. Peter Panachik crossing the red line. Moves it in front. Salak going for Panachik far side. Zelak had him tied up. Zelak overskates the puck as Troy Murray gets to it. 90 seconds to go in this opening period. Finds Seth Enzer. Danville looking to get that top line back out there, I'd imagine. As Enzer will go back behind the net, trading places with his defense partner. Held for a moment, is looking up as Troy Murray to Tessarero. Feeds it ahead, crossing the line. Is Nair loses to Everett Thompson as the puck rolls back behind the cage once more. Danville going after the puck with a minute to go in the period. Klonetsky has it for Carolina. To Thompson, who touches for Nigel Slade. Gets it back through the middle. Everett Thompson starts his engine on the backhand, puts it right into the Deer logo, and Jesse Gordachuk gives no rebound. 50 seconds to go in period number one, one nothing Carolina. Tell you, there was a good defensive play earlier by uh, number 65, Troy Murray, when Jan Slot was coming in in the slot. It just took a hip check, you know, just good old-fashioned hip check, and took him out the play, and that's, that could have saved a good uh, opportunity on goal. Carolina battling after it. Danville wins the draw as Palmerville goes back behind the net to start the breakout on the far wing. Danville has possession, just holding it at their defensive blue line. Palmerville looks up ice, spanks it off the boards. It was blocked on the way through. Carolina gets it, Slade with a shot, swallowed by Jesse Gordachuk. And now a little tie up in front is that Seth Enzer. Or Pardon, that's Palmerville. Yeah, Palmerville. That's Palmerville. Yep. Had Everett Thompson tied up, and now some shoves in front to go with it. Thompson gets up, and he's going to have a conversation with Palmerville. Hines going to step in. Whistles blowing, and 
The officials trying to control this. Everybody wants a shot at everybody else. A little three-on-three -three scrum with three officials in there to boot. Kenny's uh, edgy. Look at him. <laughs> He's ready to get in there. Thompson still jawing at Palmerville. Palmerville wouldn't let it go, which he shouldn't right now. He's trying to get a little fire before the boys uh, go into the locker room, come back in that second period and see what they can do. 31 seconds to go in the period. Carolina protecting the one nothing lead. Connor Haas and Aaron Atwell going to be released from the penalty box as they're fighting Major's timeout. We'll see what line Andre Nitsch is going to throw out there. It'll be Martin Cangelosi and Holt and George Holt. Holt splits time between the blue line and the forward position. Glass off oh. with a slapper, tipped on goal. Good stop, Gordachuk. Rebound chance blocked by Fred Hine. He's crippled as he's stung by this shot. The puck comes back out to center where the former Danville Dasher Daniel Martin will feed it back onto the defense. Through the middle of the ice, Martin dumps it in. Cangelosi will go after it with 10 seconds to go in the period. Turns it back for Daniel Martin. Sweeps one toward the net off the side of the goal. Palmerville tries to dump it out. McCor, one-timer. He's going to get another chance here. One second to go. Spun toward the net, and that's where the period will end. But not without Gulo taking a shot in the face. And now we're going to see a gathering of the clans as Gulo was cross-checked right in the teeth. Daniel Martin will be walked right back to the locker room that could as Gulo's on his hands and knees, and that did not look good. That could be a five-minute major right there. Don't get me wrong. I don't think there was any intent to get Nick no. Gulo in the face there. It's just his height is a disadvantage to him. And as again, he's got a towel over his face. And again, you know, he's always pesky, always in your face, and uh, when when. When stuff like that happens and, and you play that kind of way, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but you can come to expect somebody's going to hit you in the face, if you, especially if you're that small. You know, Same thing happened with Dominic Fate and Ahmed Mafus. It was a size difference that caused Dominic Fate to actually hit him in the face throat area. And this right here, Daniel Martin, 6'1 to a 5'6 guy. Well, went to hit him and got him in the face. And, so. and compared to Dominic Fate's cross check, where it was definitely the stick that got Mafus on the chin, Martin there, it was more gloves Glove. together, yeah. and it came up and I think stunned Gulo more than anything, yeah. and we'll see how the officials are going to react to this. That's the end of the first period and a few firecrackers to go with it. The score, Carolina 1, Danville nothing. We'll be right back with our first period intermission report after these messages. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Welcome back to Winston-Salem. Drew Blevins alongside Jimmy Milliken. Period number two is underway here as Carolina slams it all the way back into attacking ice to begin this five-minute penalty kill. Jan Salak will serve the five-minute major assessed to Daniel Martin as Martin was also given a game misconduct and ejected for cross-checking Nick Gulo at the tail end of the period. And the good thing is Gulo is out on the power play right now, so he is not injured, and uh, I think the league needs to uh, be aware of that. Hoagland goes back behind the net, and Danville having some issues with offensive organization. Gulo turns it over to Cangelosi. He'll battle with Hoagland in the near side corner. Angelosi loses the puck to Gulo, who has it on his backhand, and he'll drop it back for the defense, and we'll see if this breakout attempt fares any better. Palmerville skates it ahead of the red line and dumps it in. It goes back behind to Patrick Polivka. Hine looked like he caught a rut in the ice and didn't have speed going after it. Carolina can't get it out, though. Atwell moves it across for Palmerville. Holding, sends a shot toward the net, blocked immediately by George, uh, excuse me, Joe Osaka, rather, and Carolina finishes all the way down the ice. Penalty kill is pretty strong right now. And, Here's uh, Panacek pressuring Gordichuk, who just has to throw it into space. And this is a great look for Carolina's kill. Yes, it is. Already a minute and 90, uh, excuse me, a minute 30 seconds, 90 seconds total killed already for Carolina. Got my tongue wrapped around my eye tooth and couldn't <laughs> see what I was saying there, Jimmy. Yeah. Nair goes after the puck for Danville. Vlas off on to it. He sends it up the dasher, line held by Zelak. His shot blocked. He comes back and gathers his own rebound. Enzer, shot toward the net, tipped on the way through, steered all the way out to the far side. Wherever Thompson takes it for Carolina. He crosses the blue line, two on two. Thompson holds good defensive stick by Seth Enzer, but he can't get it around a couple of Thunderbirds as Thompson continues on the attack. Hanging on to it on the forehand, and now he's going to come back to center and feed the defense. Very smart move by Everett Thompson to spin around and takes more time off the clock. Fate to oh. Campbell slapped right off of Troy Murray. Danville's got it. Actually hit uh, uh, Troy, um, uh, Slade in the shoulder. Yeah, it hit him instead. Yeah. Two on one for Carolina. Thompson hanging on to it, walks in, holding. Deke shoots. Oh, what a stop by Gordachuk. Great stop by Gordachuk right there. Flashes leather, and the play continues. He didn't catch it cleanly, but he's got a couple of teammates there to move it out. Nair can't break it into the zone cleanly. He tries to block the dump in. It's caught in Dominic Fate's equipment, and it stays in Danville attacking ice. Tessarero feeds the front one-timer off of Nathan Campbell. Fred Hine was lurking. Can't Carolina leave, clears it to center. Can't leave Hine in the slot like that. A couple of times, he's just slid in behind everybody. Two minutes left in this major penalty kill for Carolina. They've got it at center once more. Fed ahead to Joe Cangelosi. Haas driving the net. Cangelosi puts it on to Gordachuk, and he'll cover to get a whistle with 16.58 to go in the first, uh, second. Uh, 1.58 left on the power play for uh, Danville. I tell you, the, uh, the penalty kill has looked really good so far for Carolina on this one. So far, I'm not sure if any shot has actually made its way on to Patrick Polivka. Uh, Officially. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure if Fred Hines shot in the slot got through or not, but it was still a great chance for the power play. It is worth noting that statistically a scoring chance does not equal a shot on goal. Gulo is ahead of everybody. Kenny slashes at him. Gulo goes back behind the net, rides it into the corner. Chance in front, oh, they score. Atwell. Aaron Atwell from Fred Hine ties the game at one. And that will not nix the major penalty. All majors have to be served a complete time. But with 16.42 to go in the second, we're square even at one apiece. That was a very smart move by Fred Hine to come back off the back end and uh, slide it up to Atwell in the slot and uh, just buried it home. There's nothing Patrick Prolifka could do on that one. It's going to be Aaron Atwell's first goal of the season, his third point. Fred Hine continues to score the puck at a tremendous level. That's his 13th point on the season, leading the team in the category. His seventh assist on the year, also the team lead. Very smart player, and when you got a very smart player who's got skill like he does, he can get, he can take points when he needs them. So Danville will begin another breakout attempt from their own zone. Carried up through center as Hine works it out wide for Hoagland. Hine. Thought about grabbing the puck, but he was tied up. And here comes Carolina. Osaka has it out wide. Toe drags Rister over top the glove of Jesse Gordachuk. 
as it comes back down to Atwell. Crossing the blue line, stops at the faceoff hash marks and turns it down low. Vlasov obliges on his backhand, floats it out to center with a minute to go on this kill. Gordichuk collects on his forehand and sets it up for Palmerville. Palmerville will break it out to his forehand side. A headman look. It goes just too far for Tesserero, and this will be icing against Danville as they were trying to spring the chance. Right now, Carolinas have 21 shots on goal with uh, Danville uh, up to 12 right now. 48 seconds to go in the kill. 15-48 remaining in period number two. Faceoff is tied up. Danville pokes it away. This could be a three on two if they hurry. Troy Murray comes across the blue line looking for Nair. Back for Murray. They got tied up with each other and had a spacing problem. Carolina at center as Slade crashes to his feet. It's taken by Murray. Gains the red line and dumps it in. 30 seconds to go in the kill for Carolina. This was wristed right up off the top of the glass. That one was making a beeline for you, Jimmy. It was. I was ready for it. Enzer <laughs> on his backhand puts it into Slade's chest. He can't collect the puck cleanly, so Enzer takes it back, and here come the Dashers. Crossing the blue line with 10 seconds to go on their major power play opportunity. Spun down low. Enzer is able to get it to another Dasher back behind the net as they're all caught below the goal line. Pass ricochets up high off the glass. Zelak turns one off of Polivka's glove. Play continues as we go back to five-a-side hockey. Now let's see what uh, Carolina can do full strength right here after that... Uh that power play goal from Danville. Nair being wrestled with by Stan Vlasov. Slade comes in to knock the puck free, and he's got Jan Salak to take it from him. Salak crossing the blue line. Sidesteps a body check. He's being held up by Luciano, and that is going to get a penalty to Danville, and Carolina goes on the power play. When you play with fire, you always get burned, and that's Luciano. He's another one of those types that, like, uh, like uh, the other guy we was talking about earlier who got cross-checked. He just, he's one of the chippy players, and sometimes when you chippy like that, things like that happen. And see, here's the funny thing. I don't think that was going to be a penalty initially until Salat kept his feet moving and Luciano had his arms wrapped around his leg. Puts Caroline on the fast med power play. Appointments available seven days a week, including evenings and holidays. Or you can show up with no appointment necessary at all. Get on the faster track to quality medical care with fast med. Carolina's power play operating at 16.7% so far this season. That's seventh in the FPHL, but they've had chances with the man advantage. To the top and Dominic Fate. Goes down into the corner for Salak. Stops on the hash marks and feeds Fate up at the top once again. Right side, Fate walks into the middle and goes into the right wing corner for Peter Panacek. He curls behind the net, holding on his forehand, reversing field and goes up to the top for Nathan Campbell. Back for Panacek, now stationed on the left wing. He walks to the blue line and goes low for Salak. To the top and Nathan Campbell. Holding and looking. Goes to Dominic Fade across the blue line. Back into the middle for Campbell. Wrist shot blocked immediately by Gulo. The puck will not get outside the blue line as Salak holds the line. Into the far side corner. Joe Osaka has it on his forehand. Feeds the top for Nathan Campbell. Now to Dominic Fate. Winds up and fires. Might have been blocked on the way through by his own man. And Danville survives out to center and all the way down. Joe Osaka was taking a beating up there in front of the net. And a collision with Fred Hine as Connor Haas. Was that an inadvertent collision there yeah, as it, Hine it, just <laughs> crashed to the ice? Yeah, ne neither guy seen each, each other, and they just ran right into each other, so... Hine dumps it all the way back in. Polivka stops it on his backhand and will play it along now for Nathan Campbell. He'll feed Vlasov, who will break it out to the far side. Haas's pass is deflected, but makes its way to Joe Cangelo. Sees George, George Holt fills in the center lane. Carolina sets things up as Haas feeds Vlasov at the top. Back for Connor Haas. Looks and repaints the blue line with a pass to Vlasov. Hangs on to it and goes back to Connor Haas in the middle. Long wrist shot blocked by Atwell as it rolls into the corner. George Holt bangs Seth Enzer as Morey gets to the puck but can't get it out. Blast off. Goes back down low. Murray knocks Cangelosi off the puck. George Holt smacks his guy as Danville's able to get it out to center with 10 seconds to go on the Carolina power play. Fred Hine was behind the defense if that put would have got behind our, uh, our defense on that one. Haas twirls around his man and backhands it to the far side corner for Thompson. He overskates the puck. Hine looks up for Luciano and overfed him. 
right out of the penalty box. A great opportunity, but Hines' pass was just off the mark. Everett Thompson has it at center for Carolina. Backhands it down the half wall for Nigel Slade. Sends it in front. The pass was too high for Krivalovic. Carolina holds the line. Klinetsky steps to and gives the puck to Nigel Slade. Reaching after it, Krivalovic comes in, tries to disrupt the play. Jay Kenny onto the puck now. Klinetsky hanging on to it, dumps it right back down low. Jesse Gordachuk has possession. Hoagland works it out far side. And now it'll be carried along by Nair. Salak beats him to the puck and has it, feeds it back up the boards. Good lane fill in by Tessarero. He goes in front for Zelak, knocked off the puck, and here comes Carolina. Joe Osaka on his forehand, up the right wing boards, drops it back, one-timer, Salak. Gordachuk says no and gives no rebound. Another strong save by Gordachuk tonight. He's keeping Danville in this game for the chance to win. 11.35 to go in this second period. Carolina still out shooting the Danville Dashers 23 to 12, but it's a 1-1 hockey game. Face off will be to the glove side of Jesse Gordachuk. Next broadcast will be on Friday night from the banks of the Chattahoochee River. Puck drop at 7.35 p.m. with a 7.05 pregame show. To the top, long shot tipped up into the meshing out of play. Jimmy, that'll be the first ever meeting between the Columbus River Dragons and the Carolina Thunderbirds. And then on Saturday night, right back here, as a lot of familiar faces come back to the Annex for the first time. Yeah, there's a few guys that uh, everybody knows around here that might be coming back. So we'll see what, uh, see what happens then. Osaka winds up, fires a shot wide near side. Panacha gets the rebound behind the net. Finds John Salak, who twirls back up to the point. Bacor. Finds Vlasov, wrist shot through, traffic swallowed by Gordachuk. The play isn't as chippy as it was earlier. It's kind of uh, kind of going a little stale. We'll see if uh, Carolina does anything to pick up the pace a little bit and uh, get a little fireworks started. Make a wish, Jimmy Milliken. 11-11 to go oh. in the second period. Wish everybody finishes the game safe. Fed up to the point, Vlasov tees it back down low for Salak. He finds Panachik circling the far side faceoff dot. Long shot, tipped off of Gordachuk's blocker and heads back behind the net. Vlasov steps two and goes down low. Panachik drives the net. Salak there, hack and whack time. Shot back toward the net, blocked off of Joe Osaka's backside. And here comes Fred Hine, one on one with Vlasov. Hine drops it back, one timer sent well wide as Gulo was pressured by a couple of Thunderbirds who were hanging with him. I think both teams was winded right now. Hind was going down the wing and he just lost gas and uh, waited on the man coming and there was good defensive play by Carolina to get back. Slock dumps it in, a round of Levi Armstrong. And now Danville will try to break it out. Cangelosi stationed there to send it low for Connor Haas as Carolina takes it away. Slock behind the net, he's been out there for a long time. Feeds Haas to the point, Klinetsky. Back for Connor Haas. Shields the man off on his backhand. Drives in, snap wrister just wide. Big rebound, comes right to Levi Armstrong. He moves it up through the middle. The pass runs too far for all of the Danville Dashers who are ahead, and Carolina takes it back. Got to be careful not to take it too many men in the ice penalty. Haas drops it for Holt. He steps in looking for a shooting lane. Fires blocked immediately. Jay Kenny holds the line of wrister off the blocker of Gorda, chucking it into the far side corner. Armstrong loses possession of the puck. Enzer now has to go to work against George Holt. He sends a body check. Carolina holds the line. Long wrist shot from Klinetsky. Will be caught up in the glove of Gordachuk, and he will hang on for a whistle. 9.37 to go in the second period. 1-1 Danville and Carolina tied. We'll be right back after this short break.
To Winston-Salem, Drew Blevins alongside Jimmy Milliken. 1-1 between Carolina and Danville. 9.37 to go in this second period. It's been a fun, entertaining hockey game so far, Jimmy. Yeah, that last shift for both teams. They, I mean, both teams are giving 110% out there, and you can't ask for nothing else with a good hockey game. Face-off will be to the blocker's side of Gordachuk. Nigel Slade towing in to take the draw for Carolina. Wins it cleanly back to the point. Campbell, Richter through traffic right into Jesse Gordachuk, who watched it all the way into his stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, again, like last night, you're going to have to uh, get one by him somehow. If he can see the puck, he's going to stop the puck. And see, you got one by him early on a two-on-one crashing the net. Nothing he could do. Got to have a deflection or just something fluky happen. Carolina once again dominating shots on goal, out shooting Danville 25 to 12. They win another faceoff. Gordachuk is hauled down right in front. Everett Thompson is going to get called for interference here. And there are two types of goaltender mm. interference, the penalty variety and the violation variety. And this is going to be a penalty on Everett Thompson sending Carolina to the Baptist Health penalty kill. Yeah, I'm not really sure on that penalty there because it looks like he got pushed into the goaltender. And uh, Gordachuk kind of took a little flop there. But it is what it is. Let's see if the penalty kill for Carolina can hold up and uh, see if uh, they can hold off the power play of Danville. Wake Forest Baptist Health provides the official team doctors to the Carolina Thunderbirds. To learn more about the quality medical care offered at Wake Forest Baptist Health, visit wakehealth.edu. Penalty kill is one for two for Carolina tonight. Of course, having to kill off that major penalty is a tall task. Danville got everything they wanted out of it, which was just a goal to tie things up as Polivka stops the first shot he faces. Swallows will hit the reset button and do it all over again. Slade wins it away from Fred Hine. Campbell turns up the boards, backhands it right into Hoagland. Glove to stick legally to Fred Hine now who sets it up. Hine fakes the shot and drops it for Gulo, who feeds Hoagland up at the top. Kicked out by Patrick Polivka on his bit. Gulo holds the line with help from Hine. Tries to move it up the boards. He does so to Hoagland. Slap shot right into Polivka. He'll trap it on the ice and gets a whistle with 9.02 to go in the second period. Now, have you ever seen that from a, uh, since you're an old goaltender or a goaltender of old where the goalie catches it and slams it to the ice right then? I have, actually. Okay. Okay. Some goaltenders are, are more comfortable catching it like a baseball catcher. And then drop they just go down. ahead and put it down there. Okay. Hoagland will hold the blue line here, sends a wrist shot through. Traffic blocked on the way through as it goes out wide. Gulo goes into the corner, knocks his guy. Danville having trouble keeping the puck, but they do here. Hine works behind the net on Nathan Campbell, the former teammates battling for it. Up to the point it goes. Hoagland holds the line again, sends it low to Gulo. His pass was deflected by Fate. He takes one off the ear hole, and Carolina's got it once again. Krivalovic skates ahead of the blue line, two on one defensively. Tried to get around his man and curls back up on the forehand. Pass to the front. Slade wasn't ready for it. Glass off. Sends one awkwardly back toward the cage in the goal crease. Sweeping at it with Slade. Feeds it up to the point. Bacor shot punched out by Jesse Gordachuk. All right. Zelak gets to it here for Danville. And the Dashers try to break it into the zone cleanly. Glass off. Sends it ahead. Osaka after the puck now. Watches it bounce up off the Dasher. Feeds it to the top. Danville gladly takes it. But right back into the zone is Panacic. Zelak drops it back along, and Danville will bring it in toward attacking ice. Osaka's game is really turning around now once he gets used to this style of play here. Carolina rolls it back on to Gordachuk. 15 seconds to go in the kill. 7.40 to go in the second period. 1-1 between Carolina and Danville. Zelak nearly overskated the puck. He comes back and finds Palmerville. Cross what? corner dump into Stan, the far here, side. It, oh, Vlasov. boy! Stan Vlasov wants to have a go with Tessarero. He drops him, and that'll be the end of that. Let's see if he gets a five right there for that. He dropped the gloves, and Tessarero, I don't think, wanted to go. And Vlasov has Seth Enzer by the shoulder, and Enzer's going to turn away as he's got two officials between him and Stan Vlasov. That all comes with one second to go in the kill, and the thing you worry about with Vlasov here is if he takes a major, Tessarero might not get called for anything or will only take a roughing penalty. And now Fred Hines having some words with Stan Vlasov, and he's grabbed him by the jersey. Hines will be separated here as Vlasov still going to have some words for Fred Hines. 
Crowd loves it, Jimmy. Yeah, but maybe uh, when they look at the clock, it won't be. Hopefully, it's just two minutes for roughing. Because uh, the gloves came off, though, and that's the incriminating evidence. We'll see how this gets settled. Yes, I, I would like to see Tessarero. If if you're going to edge it on like that, I'd like to see you go ahead and and, and do it. Uh, but you know, he he might have just got his team a five-minute major. Yeah, you know I mean, we'll see. I don't think it's going to be a five-minute because he is not leaving the game. So it is a two-minute minor for roughing. So. I think that shows an exceptional amount of feel in this contest as Vlasov did not continue to pound on him once he fell to the ice. Yeah, also I think the ref seen that uh, Tessarero was going at it with, uh, with Stan Vlasov as well and chose not to drop the gloves and I believe I believe it's right call made. 100 milliseconds of five on three time here. And then it'll just be a continuation of a normal power play. Five on four we go immediately after the draw. Long shot by Hoagland over the crossbar as Palmerville has the puck for Danville. Looking for Fred Hine. He lets it go for Gulo. Back behind the net to Hine. The pass was too hot to handle. So Aaron Atwell, who has the Dasher's goal, takes it on his backhand. Spanks it off the boards. Hine off angle shot right into Polivka, who will hold for a whistle. Fred Hine came in looking for it. And hang on here. This one has caught Polivka in an awkward place. And he's kind of rolled over making sure that puck stays out of the net. Mm. I did hear the whistle blow, so. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to go back and put that puck in the net, I don't think. And now the problem is going to be the puck is playing hide and seek in the equipment of Patrick Polivka. Well, we know his legs didn't go in. The only thing went in was his top of his helmet and his shoulder pads, and we know the puck don't look in there. And so. that was after the whistle after the as whistle well. well. Yep. Polivka getting his second start as a professional in the United States. He's one of the most interesting characters you'll meet. You'll notice on his decorated goaltender's mask, he has all the Marvel characters that go around the main part of the mask, but he also has his dog named Angel on the back plate. And his nickname, similar to Nathan Campbell, is Soupy mm -hmm. because, quick lesson in Czech language for you, Polivka is the word for soup. And then... And, and it's a pretty nice helmet, too. I mean, he, he took some time on that helmet. 26 shots on goal for Carolina right now, 17 on uh, for Danville. They're still on the power play for another four, one, a minute 40. Polivka gets the puck out of his equipment and will battle on. Hines snaps a twig immediately, so he'll have to go to the bench to get a new one as Danville retreats back to center. 30 seconds gone by in the penalty to Stan Vlasov. Hoagland carries it across the blue line, looking for Atwell. The pass runs too far for him. Carolina's got it. It's Connor Haas. Works his way across the blue line, holds on his forehand, and now drops to Cangelosi. Quick wrister. Go! And no! Off the crossbar. Oh. It stays out. Cangelosi hits the heavy metal, and Danville has it three on two the other way. Good call, Hine, Drew. Dispossessed by Kenny. Troy Murray can't hold the line. A brief moment of excitement as Carolina thought they had taken the lead. Troy Murray holds at his own blue line. Looks back up ice with 50 seconds to go in the power play. Dumps it in, and Everett Thompson's the first one to it for Carolina. He gives it to Daniel Klinetsky, and here comes Carolina's goal scorer. Dumps it all the way down, gets one shove in onto Seth Enzer. Behind the net, Danville will start the breakout. Murray. For Enzer, through the middle, he finds Jesse Nair crossing the oh, blue line through nice. his man. Nair on the backhand. Great stop, Polivka. Rebound oh. is loose, and Polivka kicks it out. Good defensive play by the defense. Nair on the near side half wall. Feeds it to the top. Slap shot blocked by Nigel Slade. Carolina's got numbers if they hurry. Fed ahead for Everett Thompson crossing the blue line. Through the middle now it is Slade. Dispossessed as the puck rolls harmlessly back behind the net. Five seconds to go in the kill for Carolina. Through the middle, Jesse Nair has it. One man with it. Nair crosses the blue line as we go back to five-a-side hockey. Quick shot onto Polivka, pins it up on the blocker side shoulder, collects it into the glove, and gets a whistle with 5.26 to play in the second. Great penalty kill by the uh, Thunderbirds on that. I tell you what, though, that was a great play. Up, oh, Stan in that. Let's look, 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 Stan and look in, uh, at this again. Fred Stan Vlasov and Fred Hine. But back to what I was saying, Nahur undressed our defenseman, uh, the Thunderbirds defenseman, and uh, and uh, had a great shot in on Polivka, and Polivka come up big on that one. Dominic Fate was out there on the ice. He's going to be pulled back with Nathan Campbell. 
as Vlasov is going to stay out here to defend against Fred Hine, Aaron Atwell, and company. Gulo's lined up to take the one-timer, and Vlasov is giving Fred Hine the death stare right now. Everybody jumps on a false start of the faceoff. Now we're all set, ready to go. Puck is dropped. Carolina is able to get it back out to center. Keeping a close eye on Vlasov and Hine as the Dashers dump it in with 5-10 to go in this second period. I believe Stan's got to be in his bonnet tonight, if, if all of these uh, fans out there know what that means. He's, uh, he's, he's gamer tonight. He's, he's ready, ready to go. He's ready to go. Palmerville pokes it back to center. Vlasov has it, sidesteps his man. Vlasov with a wrister goes right off the shin pad of the last man back for Danville. Bacor shot through traffic. Gordachuk never, never it. saw it. It went wide. Panachik. Holds at the blue line, feeds Vlas off, one-timer, heat-seeking missile, chance of the rebound, spun back off the side of the goal. Osaka can't get it to go as Carolina's offense starts to buzz. Fed down the dasher, holding is Jan Salak. Osaka taking some abuse in front. Danville takes the puck away. Hine dumps it all the way in. He was still behind the red icing. line. This is going to be icing against the dashers. And a huge chance for Carolina here is this line for Danville has been out for over a minute. And they've been short benched uh, since they've been here. So. And look who was the one providing all the pressure to Joe Osaka in front. It's Nick Gulo. He's always there. He's earned his stripes tonight for sure. Face off, one by Carolina. Cangelosi backhands one toward Gordachuk. It rolls off the side of the net, and the Thunderbirds continue the offensive possession. Hine intercepts the pass. He's got one man ahead. It's Atwell, poked away from him by George Holt, who comes back. Steers one across for Jay Kenny as he's ridden into the boards hard by Atwell. Kenny moves it along. Connor Haas lets it go for Cangelosi. Gets it back. A shot on goal, actually, as Gordachuk steers it away as the pass ran too far for Connor Haas. Cangelosi behind the net. Oh, 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 Jesse Gordachuk! Call the police. Highway robbery. He keeps it tied with 3.58 to go in the second period. Wow. That's the only thing I can say on that is wow. That was a NHL highlight reel save right there for Jesse Gordachuk. Unbelievable quickness with the glove hand. And more importantly, it keeps this game knotted up at one goal apiece. Danville has possession of the puck. His Enzer works it back through the middle off of Tessarero. Jay Kenny comes up through the middle. Cangelosi wasn't expecting the pass, but it was tipped on the way back down. So icing is waved. Troy Murray. Slaps it ahead for Jesse Nair. He'll cross the blue line on his forehand. Quick wrister in and out of the glove of Polivka. Big rebound given back to Polivka by Dominic Fate. And the man from Plazen, Czech Republic, will cover. Jimmy, I was doing a little bit of research on Plazen. In the German language, it is called Pilsen. And actually, in the 12th century, it's where the very first Pilsner was brewed, a very popular style of beer now that you will recognize as the style that Bud and Miller Lighter brewed in. A lot of people drink that. The best color commentary in the league right here, right? <laughs> Give me something to work with, man. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> a great piece of history and trivia. Maybe that will win you a bet at the bar and you can win one of those free beverages. There you go. In the corner, Nigel Slade knocks it free. Tumbling to the ice was Gulo. Carolina struggling to get it out into space. They do, but Palmerville smacks it back below the goal line. Gulo behind the net. Feeds Atwell, blocked by Dominic Fate and backhanded out. This will be icing if it reaches the goal line, which it will. 3.03 to go in the second period. Jesse Gordachuk, a major reason we're still not at up one to one. But Danville starting to close the shot total differential. Carolina still out shooting him 30 to 20, though. Outstanding save. I still can't get over that save that Gordachuk did right there. It was that was a great shot, but an even better save. Keeping them in the game. Face-off will be to the blocker's side of Patrick Polivka. It's won by Carolina. Head to Everett Thompson, who sends it up off the glass. Thompson with speed sends one into Gordachuk. The rebound taken by Levi Armstrong. Here comes Danville the other way. Pass out wide. Stretches a little bit too far for Efema Barakov. And Carolina's got it. Krivolovic trying the glove side again. And Gordachuk says no without giving a rebound. 2.45 to go in the second. Still tied. Is that same beam up? That brick wall up that was up last night for Gorda Chuck, because I'm telling you, he is keeping these guys in this game. And I'm wondering, uh, the, the the start that Danville had, was it because of Gorda Chuck that kept them in every game like that for them to get a chance to win every game? 
been impressive to say the least. To say the least, yes. Carolina wins another faceoff as Salak had it knocked out of his grasp at the last second by Nair. Danville pokes it ahead. Jesse Nair at the blue line. Stepping in front of it is blast off for Carolina. Walks across the blue line and feeds a pass into the middle. Off of Salak. They battle for the puck near the goal crease. It goes back behind the net, and the Dashers take it. One last pass to get it out as Nair spins it too far ahead for Troy Murray. Vlasov, having trouble with his footing here, has to retreat back behind the net, pressured by A.J. Tessarero. Through the middle, Panacic gets around his man, looking for somebody to pass to, throws it into space, and Stan Bacour, the defenseman, steps up to take the puck. Bacour drops it in front, Salak, great stop by Gordachuk, rebound still loose, and he's got it under his blocker. Wow. Wow. Jesse Gordachuk <laughs> was in the splits to keep that out. And this has been a one-man show. Jesse Gordachuk is the star. Gordachuk is out of this world tonight, I'm telling you. If it, This game could very well be 5-6-1 to one right now if it weren't for Jesse Gordachuk. And Ray Trombley made a great decision starting him tonight. Product of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, the University of Alabama, Played one year each there and then went to Australia, struggled with Adelaide, but has come back here. And the British Columbia native has been world class this evening. Patrick Polivka will tee it up for Klinetsky as he'll skate back behind the net, south of two minutes to go in the second period. Carolina will break it up the right wing side. Gangelosi dumps it in. Haas and Holt will go after it. Palmerville wins the foot race, tries to break it out to Hine. His pass for Atwell's just tipped out into center. Glenetsky going after the puck, looking for Jay Kenny. He'll fire it to George Holt, crossing the line. Cangelosi winds up, fires a slapper. Gordachuk steers it back behind the cage. Hold on his forehand. Had it roll off the boards awkwardly, and we'll talk about that at the next whistle here. Off the end wall, Carolina's going to get it once more. Haas yep. with speed crossing the blue line. Sidesteps his man. Haas drives. Gordachuk says no. Joe Canzalosi got crashed that net right there. Haas has been doing that all weekend, so Joe, got he's got to know that you got to crash that net and bang that rebound home. Haas dumps it in to hold. He was upended by Palmerville. A couple of fans wanted a call. They'll get none with one minute to go. It's dumped into the zone by Palmerville. Polivka lets it go, but Gulo's there for Danville. Turns it over to Nigel Slade. He comes near his side for George Holt. Pass back into the middle for Slade, reaching out after it. Sticks collide. Puck goes up in the air. Enzer couldn't knock it away. Everett Thompson takes it for Carolina. Sends to Slade. He's crunched by Jesse Nair. Danville takes the puck, and they'll send it out to center. Dominic Fate curls on his forehand and finds Jay Kenny. Feeds it ahead. A big hit laid on to Nigel Slade as the puck rolls back behind of Jesse Gordachuk. Krivolovic going in with a little bit of help from Thompson. Puck knocks free to Campbell up at the top. His shot blocked immediately with 20 seconds to go in the period. Nair through the middle, finds Tessarero, who backhands one along, a bouncing puck is corralled, gloved to stick by Nathan Campbell, is back behind the play, Krivalovic lost his stick, forked into the zone by Five seconds. Nigel Slade. From the corner boards, Danville will take it, they'll flip it, end over end into the middle, and that is where period number two will end. The Another. Carolina Thunderbirds yield one goal on a five-minute major penalty taken by Daniel Martin, and that is where we stand one-to-one -one at the completion of 40 minutes. Jimmy? Another great period of, uh, of action. Uh, both teams giving their all. This is what Federal Professional Hockey League is all about. Jesse Gordachuk has been the story as he has been equal to every shot but one. We'll give you some stats and figures coming up on the other side of this break. The score at the end of the second period, Carolina 1, Danville 1. We'll be back with our second period intermission report after these messages.
Fairgrounds and X Drew Blevins alongside of Jimmy Milliken as we welcome you back to the home of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Final regulation period of this four game homestand. Carolina looking to finish the four games here in Winston with a record of three and one. The only loss thus far to the Danbury Hat Tricks. Put this game on reset for you. Aaron Atwell tied the game in the second period. Assist on that goal by Fred Hine. And Daniel Klinetsky had the opening goal of the game midway through the first period with an assist by Joe Cangelosi, his first point since returning to the Thunderbirds, Jimmy. Yep. I've uh, been waiting on Joe uh, Cangelosi to uh, get his uh, skating legs back. And maybe uh, he's been thrown into that position. And we'll see if it keeps doing the job he's supposed to be doing. Fresh ice surface, Fred Hine will face off against Peter Panacic. Puck is dropped, and the final period of regulation play begins as Vlasov goes after the puck. He beats Atwell to it. Line held by Palmerville as he feeds it back down the dasher. Rolled toward the front of the net. Panacic's going to let it go around for Osaka. Hine pressures him, can't hold the puck. Carolina comes two on two across the attacking blue line. Panacic. Driving the net on his forehand. Wraps it around, wrist shot. Gordachuk denies him with the blocker. Into the corner it goes once again. Salak goes to the point for Vlasov. Long wrist shot, tip, they scored! Joe Osaka with a deflection in front and Carolina's in the driver's seat. You've got to tip the puck in front of Gordachuk and that's what just... Osaka's goal assisted by Stan Vlasov for Joe Osaka. It is his third goal as a member of the Thunderbirds. It comes 31 seconds into the third period. And a giant marker for Carolina as they lead two to one. Connor Haas comes across the blue line on his backhand, stops and button hooks up to the top. Kenny with a one-timer, goes well wide, but bounces right into the clutches of George Holt. He feeds Klinetsky at the point. Wrist shot tipped on the way through. Behind the net it goes now Connor Haas on his backhand. Shovels one back up to the point. Klinetsky pinches. He decks his man and holds the line. Klinetsky goes down low as Connor Haas reverses field and finds Jay Kenny at the top. He sends it right back down the kick plate. Too wide of George Holt. Klinetsky pinches, makes the play down low. Behind the net, Troy Murray. He disrupts the play for a moment as Fred Hine comes back up, gets it ahead of the blue line. But Daniel Klinetsky's there to take it for Carolina at center. The Thunderbirds hold possession. Nigel Slade, crack crossing the blue line. Puck rolls into Gordachuk as he wrists one all the way down the ice. Carolina gets it in the form of Nathan Campbell. Cross ice pass to Dominic Fate. Back for Campbell. Sends it off of the official. Slade fumbles with it for a moment. Falls over. Gets it ahead of the blue line but is pressured as Efimov Barakov dumps it in. Right now, Carolina just don't even make any mistakes. Just get the puck out. Play simple. Trouble behind the net as Krivalovic is able to get it ahead to Slade. Now through the middle. Could be a chance for Everett Thompson. He stops and turns back. Walks it to the blue line and backhands it right off of Slade's shin pad and back out to center. Slade's had a long shift. He's going off now. Carolina gets across the blue line. The line will be held here. Everett Thompson through the middle. A bouncing puck ends up in the Carolina attacking corner. Nathan Campbell. Got a Mm. Hangs on to it. He looks for somebody to pass to and dumps it down for Panacic. He walks up the near side boards and feeds it along once more to the top and Nathan Campbell. Winds up, fires a slapper well wide of the far side post to Dominic Fate on the opposite side of the point. Into the middle, Salak with his shot, wristed up off of Fred Hines stick as he denies the bid and it goes out of play. That was a good play, seeing Salak coming off the bench to get, try to get him in the high slot to take a rip shot. Fred Hines seen it, stepped in the front of it. Got a little stinger right there. You can see him gingerly on that left, uh, left ankle or left leg. 17.08 to go in this third period. 2-1, Carolina has the lead. False start off. Glass off, holds, moves it across for Panacic. Panacic. Gives it out far side. Connor Haas takes it. He'll work behind the net. Still a delayed penalty. Takedown behind the net as Osaka got the worst of it. Vlasov winds up, fakes the slapper. Holds has a shooting lane, sends one toward the net. It's going to roll back behind the kick plate and now to Bacor. At the point, he finds Connor Haas. Haas hanging on to it. Sees Bacor. It's a six on five advantage. Vlasov sends a bullet that misses just wide. 
Carolina still holding possession. Panacek gives it back to Bacor, and he'll retreat all the way back into defensive ice to get it. 16 minutes to go in the period. Carolina extending their man advantage time. Panacek knocked off the puck here, and Danville will touch it, and Carolina will go back to the fast med power play. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. On that play right there, Osaka took an absolutely beating in front of the net by two uh, Danville defensemen. And I tell you, that it says a lot for that kid. To the top, Klinetsky holds at the blue line. Feeds it down for Joe Cangelosi, stationed on the left wing half wall. Cangelosi goes up to the top, Klinetsky. Back for Cangelosi, the pass was tipped. Danville has it. Palmerville on the backhand, can't get it around Cangelosi, who holds the line. Klinetsky. Goes out to the far side. Connor Haas walks in. Ristert sticked away by Gordichuk. George Holt has it. On his backhand, he goes across for Connor Haas, who's upended by Hoagland. Battle continues on that far side wing boards, and Danville is able to get it all the way out. 40 seconds gone by in the Carolina power play. 2-1, Thunderbirds lead. 30 seconds to go in the Carolina power play. 14.30 to go in the third period. Little battles, little battles. Just in case you didn't see, Seth Enzer and uh, Eric Thompson up in front of the net had their own little battle going there for a while. Danville's penalty kill stops the initial entry. So the Thunderbirds will have to play pitch and catch here. Krivalovic goes across for Dominic Fate. To Krivalovic now, who finds Nathan Campbell as he crosses the blue line. Dumped in. Osaka lets it go around. Danville takes it out of the box as Troy Murray. He's going to dart directly for the bench as we go back to five aside with under 14 minutes to go in the period. Through the middle of the ice, Panacek takes the puck. Immediately taken away by Danville. Could be a two-on-one if they hurry. Carolina takes the puck away. Palmerville with a rising slap shot off the end pane of glass. Hit with a giant thud and stays in Danville's attacking ice. Shot from the point, Polivka steers it up into the meshing to get a whistle with 13.32 to go in the third period. Allegra Marketing Print and Mail is a full-service marketing print communications company based in Winston-Salem. They help companies create solutions to simple or complex problems through expertise, creativity, and a can-do attitude. Give Allegra a call at 336-777. 8-6-1-5. Again, Carolina's got to just play it simple, just get the, chip the puck out, and uh, don't pinch and don't allow them to have any two-on-ones. Stan Vlasov steers it back for Stanislav Bakur. He moves it along, and Carolina's got it through center. Good pressure by Atwell as he gets a couple of stick checks in onto Panacek. Drops it for Salak in the far side corner. To the point it goes. Held for a moment. Long wrist shot. Tipped on the way through, but misses wide. Aaron Atwell to the puck for the Dashers. Back hands it up through center. Vlasov goes gloves to stick legally and swings it out wide for Bacor. Bacor retreats below the goal line. Turns it over at center. Could be a chance. Palmerville to Atwell. Steers one toward the net and just wide. Onto the puck once again is Atwell. He goes down low. A chance in front. Here's Palmerville. One-timer. Great stop by Polivka. Huge. Takes it right in the bird crest and gives no rebound. Huge save by Polifka right there because right now Danville is buzzing in the zone and just little plays that Carolina's not doing. Been a roller coaster back and forth all night. Ups and downs to go with it. Zelak onto the puck as he snaps a pass through the middle toward Jesse Nair. Off of his stick too hard and Cangelosi takes it for Carolina. Wrist shot goes off of a skate on the way through and deflects into the far side, meshing out of play, 12.30 to go in the third period. I will say, I think Jesse Nair, number 91, I believe that's his number. That's he, right. He's had a great game tonight. We have said his name a lot. You know, he's a very skilled forward, and I think Danville's got a, a good thing with, when they got Jesse Nair. Face-off is one back by Carolina, Klinetsky. Rolls it down the near side boards. Holt back for Klinetsky. A rolling puck through the middle off of the skate of Troy Murray to Seth Enzer, who's stuck behind his net. Enzer on the backhand. Moves it along. Oh, what a huge hit by Jay Kenny. 
through the middle of the ice. Haas, and hold on a second. Kenny's going to have some words here. Play is stopped, and the penalty was called by the back official who was nowhere near the play. That was a terrible call right there. He's calling charging on Kenny. Kenny took two steps, and that was it, and hit the guy, and it's just a really bad call. Really He's bad got call. him for charging here. And the referees are taking it from the fans here in Winston-Salem. Kelly Curl and I saw a very similar play where a call was made by the back official in the neutral zone in this four-man system. By definition, when you're taught to officiate, that's not his call to make. Yep. It's the low side officials. Exactly. And I think that's the source of frustration here. And Jay Kenny is back in the penalty box. As a back official, you cannot make that call. Polivko watches a shot from the point right into the glove. He'll get a whistle. Puts the Thunderbirds back on the Baptist Health penalty kill. Visit wakehealth.edu to learn more about the tremendous medical care offered at Wake Forest Baptist Health. You hear the howls. <laughs> yeah, the fans don't like that call at all. Fans don't usually like the calls, but that, they have a very good reason not to like that one. This rolls in on to Jesse Gordachuk. Jimmy, he had some trouble playing the puck like that yesterday. Much more Much, clean today. Yes. It's got to be This icing. rolls all the way down beyond Fred Hine. Icing against Danville, 11.47 to go in the third period. A minute 38 in the kennel, and the, pardon me, Kenny <laughs> penalty for charging. Spit it out, Drew. Spit it out. I'm trying my best, man. <laughs> it's, it's this Kona Ice hot chocolate we got, right? Tremendous work by the good people at Kona Ice. Oh, man, this is good hot chocolate. It is freezing in here. <laughs> Cold barn typically means good ice. Good ice. Gulo will turn this one back for Johan Hoagland. Gulo's been all over the ice tonight. Made a couple of big plays for Danville. Dumped in onto Polivka. He's going to play it out himself. Wristed right oh, into Gulo. Oh. Here's a chance out wide. Off the goal post. Hine couldn't finish. Carolina oh. tries to clear it. It hits something on the way back out, and the Thunderbirds just do get it out. This is offside. It hit Slade. Slade took two shots off that shoulder tonight, and you can see he's in a lot of pain. Medical staff going to have a look at him as he's going to come off. Patrick Polivka sent that one right to the native son of Penfield, New York, Nick Gulo. And would that not have been the ultimate needle in the side if he had tied that game up it there? It sure would have. Gulo was the one who took the cross check to the face from Daniel Martin at the end of the first period. Martin was ejected and given a major penalty for that. Panacek tries to work it out. He can't do it. Nair has it behind the net. Feeds it up to the point for Enzer. His shot misses near side wide. Good hold on the line. Tesserero can't get it out on the initial try. Long shot, deflects off of Stan Vlasov. He wins the foot race to it, sends it right in to Seth Enzer, who holds the line. Zelak tried to work a pass into the front. Vlasov defends him nicely. Carolina gets it and shoots it all the way down. Another good penalty kill effort here for Carolina. They still have 25 seconds to get rid of. Troy Murphy for Cangelosi. Joe Cangelosi lifts one out. A bouncing puck will be fielded cleanly. Slash in the middle of the ice. No penalty here as a stick was taken right out of the hands of Troy Murray. Campbell tries to send it out of the zone. Connor Haas helps him on the wing, but they can't get it around Marco Luciano. He sends a pass through the middle, intercepted by Krivalovic. Here comes Jean Krivalovic right down the near side boards. Into the corner he goes. He takes a body check, spins off of it, and moves it up to the top for Vlasov. Vlasov will send it right back down the dasher. Krivalovic behind the net in front. One-timer by Thompson. Kicked out. Good stop by Gordachuk as that once again came in a little slower than normal. Bouncing puck comes all the way back out to center. Krivalovic has it. cross eyes pass, and he'll get it back. Through the middle of the ice, looking for Thompson. Pass is intercepted. Turning with it here is Efimov Barakov, but he turns it over in attacking ice. Everett Thompson being hounded from behind. Sends a shot on to Gordachuk, who steers it back behind the net. Off the end glass, Vlasov tries to hold the line. It goes over the blue line. He spins it back. Dominic Fate will have to go after it. Artsim Efimov Barakov chasing him behind the net. Sent into open space. Levi Armstrong is going to protect the line. Armstrong into the corner. Hit hard by Slade as he crashes back down to the playing surface. Efimov Barakov there to help dig it out. 
Battle continues. Pulled out by Carolina. This is going to be hooking as Fred Hine got his stick up in parallel with one of the Thunderbirds forwards, and I believe that was Osaka, and the Thunderbirds are going to go back on the power play. Great work by Joe Osaka keeping his legs moving, and one little tug is all it took to bring him down, and the referee, both referees saw it, and uh, it was a good play, good, good, good call. Fast med power play coming up here for Carolina. Fred Hine is a native of North Reading, Massachusetts. Played some of his college hockey at the University of New England with the Nor'easters and Becker College as well. Well, they're going to go to the media timeout here. It seems to be the improper spot, but more on that in a moment. 2-1 Carolina leads, 8.32 to go in the third period. Back after this. Jimmy Milliken, Jimmy, I was under the impression that the league is not supposed to allow its officials to go to a media timeout after a penalty has been called. They do in that case. Does that favor Carolina or Danville? Uh, both. It, it just depends on who was out there for Danville. If, if their penalty killers was out there, uh, they get a little rest. And also, if your your power play unit for uh, Andre Nietzsche was out there as well, it gives them a little rest as well. So it can help both teams. Off the draw, Carolina steers it back for Vlasov. He walks the line and goes across. He'll get it right back. Panacek, near side, corner boards, feeds it along to Jan Salak, trading places with him. Panacek to the top and Salak, hanging on to it as he goes to Vlasov. Back for Salak in the middle to Panacek, left wing side. Walks to the blue line and comes back down into the faceoff circle. Now to Salak, back down for Panacek. They continue to play pitch and catch against this box penalty kill. Rister on to Gordachuk. He catches it and holds. 8.02 to go in regulation play. Minute 30 to go on the hind penalty. Yeah, Salak was a little lost on that uh, that power play. He didn't know whether to switch with Panacic or switch was uh, staying down there. So it was uh, it was stayed on this side the whole time. Haas battling after the pocket. Squirts out to the top for Vlasov as he works it out far side. Wrist shot through traffic blocked. Bacor goes to Vlasov. Back for Bacor. He walks in, a low wrister, tipped just wide. Salak onto the puck for Carolina. Feeds Vlasov and gets it back. Jan Salak hangs on at the top of the left face off circle. Trades places with Panacic and gives him the puck. Long wrist shot, tipped on the way through by Salak, but it goes well wide. Minutes to go in the power play for Carolina. Panacic has the puck. Stops and starts as he works it up to the top of Vlasov. At the blue line, Panacic. Holds on to it. Looks down low and feeds John Salak. He goes for Vlasov. One-timer blocked up in a couple of bodies on the way through as Hoagland with a good shot block there. Danville gets to the puck and out it goes. That was almost a bad pinch by uh, Stan Vlasov on that. Luckily, uh, Panacic got back. Vlasov holds on to it on his forehand. Back behind the net. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Seven minutes to go and counting down in this third period. Carolina leads 2-1. Krivalovic crosses the blue line with speed. Curls on his forehand side and feeds it up to the top. Dominic Fate gives to Nathan Campbell. Fakes the slap shot and gives to Dominic Fate. Right of center, he walks in. Scores! Welcome back, Dominic Fate. Dominic Fate with his first point of the season. It's a huge power play goal, and Carolina's up 3-1. to one. Isn't that a fairy tale return? You're so used to seeing Dominic Fate make his impact with body checks and flying fists. Instead, it is a slap shot that gives Carolina a two-goal advantage. 
He has a deceiving hard slap shot, nobody, a real heavy slap shot nobody really knows about. Beats Gordachuk low on the blocker side. There was traffic in front. And Dominic Fate has his first of the season. Danville looking for an answer. Nair crosses the blue line. Thompson rides him into the half wall. It's fed down low for Tessarero. Nair comes in and they battle two by two in the far side corner. Picked up by George Holt as he comes through the middle. Everett Thompson going one on one with Murray. Thompson hangs on to the puck on his forehand side, fours behind the net, wrapped to the front, Rister off the shoulder of Gordachuk, and Danville sweeps it back out to the safety of center. Campbell to Krivalovic, feeds it into the zone as Everett Thompson will go chase for Carolina, and we've got an arm up by the far side linesman. This is actually going to be offside on Carolina. Yeah, you have to give a lot of credit to that power play goal to, to Nigel Slade, who was posted right up into, right on the edge of the blue paint. Gordachuk couldn't see nothing in a slow slap shot from Dominic Fate just beating the five hole and there was really nothing to, um, the uh, goaltender Gordachuk could do. 5.55 to go in this third period. 3-1 Thunderbirds in the driver's seat. Off the draw, Carolina moves it ahead for Panacek. Quick wrister was affected by Palmerville. Carolina sweeps it up to the top. Klinetsky slapper rising, stuck up in a couple of bodies in front. Salak denied with the leg pad of Gordachuk. At the blue line, Panachik holds the line, sends one across the way that Fred Hine blocked. So he was looking for Jan Salak. Hine hanging on to the puck as he moves it up through the middle. Here's a chance for Gulo. Believe Palmerville who knocks him off the puck as it goes into the corner. That was very lucky for Carolina right there because he was down and out. Angelosi chance, oh. Rister got caught up on the shoulder of Gordachuk once again. Atwell has the puck and backhands it all the way back down the ice. Yeah, Polivka was down and out. If uh, if, if a Danville player could have got a hold of that puck, that was definitely going to put one in the back of the net. Connor Haas retreats back into his defensive zone. One man to beat. Sidesteps his man and comes across the blue line with speed. Takes a shoulder and drops it for Cangelosi. In front, lifted sky high wow. up into the mesh and out of play. I don't believe that puck has come down yet. George Holt used the pitching wedge on that one. That was one of those 64-degree lob wedge. It was, it, was, it was real. Could have used the sand on that one. I don't know. <laughs> that was it. It, it. Now it just came down. It just it just landed. Nah. Great backspin on that <laughs> shot, too. <laughs> Threw did. it right back to the pin. That's right. But, yeah, I, 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 although the, the score is 3-1, to one, Gordachuk has, uh, has played phenomenal. I, I just can't give it up to uh, what he has uh, faced in goal tonight. 39 saves on 42 shots thus far. Carolina wins the draw. Vlasov has a tough time with it on the rough ice. All the Thunderbirds have to come back out with a touch-up offside in effect, and that will allow Danville to start the breakout. Far side pass intercepted by Cangelosi. Carolina has to get out of the zone again, touch up. But at this point, it's just about watching the seconds tick away. Headman look right on to Polivka. Mm. That surprised him as he traps it between his body and the glove. That was a weird bounce on that one. Everybody has seen one of those awkward center ice, far blue line shots that manages to take one of those hops up on edge. The ice can get rough here, especially at that end in particular. And Polivka makes a good save on a 175 foot shot. Hein will take the draw here for Danville, loses as Jan Krivalovic goes back behind his own net to feed it all the way across to the opposite side wing. Palmerville off the near side half wall. Slade steps to the puck and has it. Three on two as they cross the line. Slade feeds it across for Krivalovic. He was tied up with Atwell and they battle into the far side corner. Atwell has possession of the puck but only for a moment. Two Thunderbirds there with three Danville Dashers, and Carolina comes away with the win to the point. Shot bounces into Gordachuk. He sticks it along, making sure to keep the game clock rolling. 3.30 to go in the third period. 3-1 Thunderbirds. Atwell through the middle to Gulo. Nick Gulo couldn't handle the puck. Slade affected from behind by Fred Hine, but moves it ahead on the second opportunity. Osaka drops it for Nathan Campbell. In front, a quick shot denied by Gordachuk. As he looks skyward for it, it's behind his net. Hine loses puck possession. 
And Carolina's Osaka has it to the front. Campbell off of his stick. Tesserero tried to skate it out, but he couldn't do it. Thunderbirds slam it up the near side half wall. And Klonetsky will take it. Panacek works around to Palmerville. This is nine ironed right back off of Palmerville to Panacek. He hangs on to it, fires one into Gordachuk. He'll stick it out to the far side this time. And here comes Danville. Crossing the blue line, it's Nair. Wrist one toward the net, off the side of the goal with 2.30 to go in the third period. Tesserero spins around, locates the puck, and he'll be pressured by Jay Kenny. Patrick Zelak comes in to knock the puck free, but right to the Thunderbirds, who will lift it up to center. 2.25 left to go. 3-1 to one Carolina on top. We'll see what Carolina can do. Popped open, and that will draw a whistle. And now some pushing and shoving as Cangelosi is getting involved. Jay Kenny having some words with guess who, Seth Enzer. And Enzer saying, nope, I'm sorry. There they are, it's face to face, come on. Oh, I believe Enzer's saying, I'll buy you a gift Christmas. They're still having words. Jay Kenny is going to walk him right back to the bench and he said something and that got Kenny fired up. And Brian Scully has Kenny by the back numbers if and is not going to let him go. If you're going to chirp, do something. If you're not, go to the bench and sit down. Oh, that's exactly what Seth Enzer has done. There's a whole lot of skill differentiation there. Seth Enzer is a younger kid trying to prove his stripes, earning a spot on this Danville team. Jay Kenny is a veteran defenseman of this league. He's played for multiple teams. And if Brian Scully hadn't have grabbed Jay Kenny between the one and the seven, Nahur would have had a bad day. Because that's who he was going after, because that's who was chirping him on the way to the bench. Carolina is going to get all the guys they want out there. Face-offs won by the Danville Dashers. Two minutes to go in this hockey game as Carolina will be able to do a little bit of scoreboard watching because if Menner or Watertown loses, they'll be able to start staking their claim for the top of the FPHL. Watertown at last check was up on Battle Creek 2-0. Up into the Carolina bench and out of play. John Liebensberger over there. Liebensberger, excuse me. Equipment manager who's done a phenomenal job. Great, great job for us. I think the special thing about Liebensberger was the fact that he was there at free agent camp the whole time, training camp the whole time, sacrificing mornings to go into Greensboro. And a lot of people don't know his full-time job. He works at a NASCAR racing team, the Richard Childress Racing, as a, a head uh, electrician. Timeout called on the ice here. Jimmy, I didn't catch a glimpse of who actually ended up calling that. It would make sense if it was Danville, perhaps. I believe, uh, uh, you know, Coach has got his board out. Uh, Coach Nietzsche has got, got his board out, so I don't know if he called it, if he's telling them, look here, just chip it out. Begulo Atwell will be the forward line. Faceoff will still be in neutral ice, favoring Danville's attacking end. Carolina out shooting the Dashers 42 to 30. Patrick Polivka has seen a lot more action than he did last night. He's had a couple of critical saves as well. Looking for a few more here to close things out. Big faceoff right here. Hine wins it back for Danville, and the Dashers get to the puck. It goes off of Murray's skate. There goes Gordachuk. And Gordachuk goes to the bench. Murray steps below the goal line and gives to Atwell as he feeds down low. Just got to chip it out for Hine Carolina. behind the net to Jesse Nair. Hanging on to it, he feeds Fred Hine. Minute 15 to go at the point. Palmerville goes to Murray through the middle. Sticks collide. The puck hops up. Osaka has it. Hine chasing after him. Osaka toward the empty net just wide. And this will not be icing. I'm not sure if that shot was affected. Back toward the empty net. That was taken right out of the clutches of a yawning cage. Palmerville steps ahead of the blue line, kicks it along. Oh, big hit. Carolina slams it all the way down of the empty net, and this will be icing against the Thunderbirds. Big hit by Jan Salat on the Neher, Neher of it there on the far side to clear up that puck, so I'm not sure who sent it down, but that was a big play to clear it up. It's going to be that same tired unit out for Danville. They have no timeout to give them rest anymore. 52 seconds to go third period, 3-1 Carolina. Danville needs a pair quick to tie. 
what we, what's going on here is uh, Andre, Andre Nitsch. Nitsch might have very well called his timeout now. And I'm not one to question Andre Nitsch as he has proven time and time again he is one of the best coaches to have ever put on the suit and tie in the FPHL. But I'm not sure how much sense that one makes, Jimmy. Well, I believe that he's just telling his guys, look here, calm down, slow down, chip it. We've got a two-goal lead. Let's just chip it up off the board, run, go get it. Do not pinch. Do not try to get – there's no use for the team to score this goal. Just chip it out, stack up the blue line, and don't let them in. I believe that's what he's telling – he's telling his troops just to calm down. My Protein is the official protein provider of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Click their My Protein logo on carolinathunderbirds.com for a special 42% discount on select My Protein products. My Protein. 52 seconds to go in the third period. This is a more uh, close shot game. 42 for the Carolina Thunderbirds and 30 for the Danville Dashers. This has been a really good game tonight, Drew. 3-1, Carolina has the lead where it counts. Panachik will take the draw against Fred Hine once again. Hine pokes it down low for Jesse Nair. He's got it on his forehand as Vlasov takes him into the corner boards. Nair, stick handling with it, tries to go back down the boards to Hine. Intercepted by Carolina, flung all the way back down. This will miss the empty net, uh, and it barely. will just reach the goal barely. line. You a curling fan, Jimmy? Because that's one where you get the brooms out and start sweeping hard, yeah, hard. It's, uh, it was just uh, gets down there. It was barely, it barely got there. But hey, it got there. Now, Danville has another chance off the faceoff with Fred Hine and Peter Panacic. Sweeping at it, Hine loses this draw. Bacor goes to get it for Carolina. Hine steps in front of it, plays with. Panachik's stick as it's taken out by Carolina in a foot race. Osaka oh. diving after it. Troy Murray Great wins play, the foot Troy race. Murray. Danville's onside but loses the puck to Panachik. 15 seconds to go. Nair holds the line in front for Hine. He's knocked off the puck. A bouncer taken by Stan Vlasov. He gains the red line toward the end. Oh. And he scores! Dan Vlasov seals the win for Carolina with the empty netter, 4-1 Thunderbirds. And Palmerville has some words for Brian Scully. He's livid about something. And he's just been tossed. Alex Palmerville will head to the locker room nine seconds early as he is ejected by Brian Scully. Jimmy, I'm curious if he had anything to say about the music starting to play while the puck was being shot toward the empty net. If you're, if you're tuned out, that shouldn't bother you. I think it was something that happened over here on a check or a hand pass or something that he's thinking. I'm not sure, I didn't really see it, but I know that uh, he was very livid about something. Polivka plays it into the corner. Time runs out, the horn sounds. And the Carolina Thunderbirds win again. 4-1, your final. Great games this weekend. Danville has nothing to hang their head about. Both games was very entertaining. Tonight was really entertaining with the fights. Both teams played great. I mean, it's, it's bad. Somebody's got to go home a loser. But fortunately, Carolina did come off with a W. And Danville goes back to Danville with the L. The Thunderbirds will improve to 7-1-0-0 on the season as playing the game just a little bit earlier than the rest of the league. They are the first team in the FPHL to reach the 20-point threshold. They have 21 standings points and firmly stake their claim as the top of the Western Division. Danville continues to struggle as they are now on a four-game losing streak. They fall to an even 500. 4-4-0-0 four, four, zero, and zero as they are stuck at 12 standings points and now they'll have to do a little scoreboard watching as Columbus takes on Port Huron in Michigan. The final score from Winston-Salem, the Carolina Thunderbirds 4, the Danville Dashers 1. We'll be right back with our Budweiser postgame show as we wrap up the weekend from Winston-Salem.
Jeez, we gotta work that out. What's that? Refresh clean feed, please. Not you. What is it, the video? Radio. We're, we're gonna have to look.